I came to bury you. Curse it, spite that ever I was born to set it. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? This is the excellent foppery of the world. I think he was sneaking up on me for a long time, but there indeed was a quite extraordinary moment, not far from here, we're in Stratford-upon-Avon now, in a theatre that I love deeply, and in a theatre that gave me a life, a purpose, and a voice. I was watching, as an amateur actor at the time, an extraordinary performance by Sir Ian Holm of Richard III. And I was so captivated by, I realized later, the verse, the use of alliteration and rhythmic speech in Ian's voice as a weapon was extraordinary. And he was writing the text like a warrior riding a horse that he knew very, very well, taking extremely dangerous turns, stopping on a dime, and then accelerating um, with extraordinary energy. You put a hypnotic character on the stage and you hypnotize your audience with the language and the audience wonder what is going on. It's the language. I wondered what was going on to such an extent that I passed out during the performance with absolute excitement and thrill. I couldn't get a seat. I had to stand at the back. It was sold out, sold out, sold out. And there were several people standing at the back under the balcony. Therefore, the heat was extraordinary there. And wallop, I went down. I was revived by a wonderful Warwickshire lady in the foyer, given a glass of water and went back into the auditorium and tracked him, walked, walked backwards and forwards at the back of the auditorium, keeping the minimum distance between myself and Ian Holm. And at the end of the performance, I said to the actors whom I met at the stage door and to whom I gazed upwards on the balcony of their green room, as a mere civilian and said, I would give anything to be part of this company. And David Warner said, work hard. I remember having a drink with him in the dirty duck. My, the pint was going like this in my hand because they were gods, these people. They were gods. And two years later, I auditioned for this company. Trevor Nunn gave me a place in this company and I was directed by him, by John Barton, by David Jones, and my voice was, was tuned and bullied and cajoled and caressed by the genius of Cicely Berry, uh, to whom I owe so much. And um, that's my moment. Mm -hmm.